So it's colder as well. That translates into precipitation that would normally be rain into snow. So we have both oceans dipping in their water temperature. And so essentially that means this part of the country is seeing a lot of snow. It's also why we've seen flooding in Australia, in Brazil, in portions of Southeast Asia. So we know what it is. Unfortunately, we don't know when it will end. Right. And unfortunately, we can't control it. Unfortunately, <laughs> we cannot control it. But at least now we know what it is, which is always helpful. All right, Marisol, thanks. You're going to have a, a closer look at the forecast for the rest of the country. Absolutely. We're coming up a little bit later. Chris, though, over to you. Erica, thank you. Now the very latest on the amazing recovery of Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. She's beginning several months of rehab, less than three weeks after being shot in the brain. Meanwhile, the man accused of shooting her looked up information about assassinations before the Tucson attack. CBS News correspondent Don Teague is in Houston for us this morning with the very latest. Don, good morning. Good morning, Chris. Doctors have called Gifford's recovery remarkable so far, and after upgrading her condition to good, they gave the go-ahead on Wednesday for her move to rehab. Her husband gave a big thumbs up as the ambulance carrying Gabrielle Giffords made the short drive from Memorial Hermann Hospital to a rehabilitation facility. The move under extremely tight security came just hours after doctors upgraded Giffords' condition. In terms of recovery for brain issues, this is really at lightning speed. She's done remarkably well. Giffords had been kept in the hospital's intensive care unit because of excess fluid draining from her brain. That situation is now under control and Giffords is already doing physical therapy in the rehab center. I think that almost every function that we think about, we've seen you know, her make progress on it. So I don't think there's any one thing that I would say at this point that she can't do. Mark Kelly posted this tweet last night saying, Gabrielle moved over to Tier Memorial Herman today. She's doing great. Her medical team says Giffords has good vision and is able to sit, stand, and communicate with others. But a breathing tube in her throat prevents her from speaking, though that may soon change when doctors install a special speaking valve. She still suffers weakness on her right side, but doctors no longer call it paralysis. As for the man who allegedly shot her, an official with knowledge of the investigation has confirmed to CBS News that Jared Loftner, who pleaded not guilty Monday to the attempted assassination, of Giffords, researched lethal injection, solitary confinement, and political assassination on the Internet in the weeks leading to the attack. Well, back here in Houston, we are told that Giffords has been resting well, and she really needs that rest because she's already doing intensive physical therapy. Chris? CBS is Don Teague in Houston for us this morning. Don, thank you. Also in Houston, Dr. Gerard Francisco, Chief Medical Officer at Tier Memorial Herman and the lead doctor on Congresswoman Gifford's rehab team. Doctor, good morning. Good morning. Since the shooting almost three weeks ago, we heard in Don's piece a second ago, the progress has been labeled lightning speed. What's been the most, uh, I guess, impressive improvements that you've seen uh, with the doctor over the last three weeks that you've kind of now been brought into the mix? Well, I, I've seen improvement in uh, practically all aspects, uh, improvement in her movement, uh, improvement in her ability to um, uh, participate in our therapy program. You plan on putting a speaking valve into her breathing tube. Uh, can I ask when you do plan on doing that? Uh, we do not know yet when that's going to happen. That will be uh, dictated by her uh, further recovery. Uh, the other members of my team are closely monitoring her uh, overall condition, and when it's ready and safe for us to proceed with that part of her rehabilitation, we will do so. And can I ask what you feel is the likelihood that she'll actually be able to speak when that valve is implemented? Well, right now, it's, uh, we're still uh, assessing her overall condition, so I really cannot uh, assign a timeline for that. Uh, how, how has she been able to communicate? Right now, oh, this is just so sad. In therapy, we're able to engage this her is more uh, in the would. therapy program. Uh, she's and I'm a man of God. That the therapist, uh, provide I'm in a wheelchair. Um, and she's been uh, participating. And I well. serve in the ministry and of the clock. For patients in your career. 43 feet and 411. Uh, again, we hear the words. So that conjointly, I have to say, I am a wheelchair person. I know WWF, faith, a metaphor of life. It's sad. It's sad. And that's what I look forward to. And that's what engages me in this field. Uh, because Everybody has made old dogs a minute to decide. They recover even many years after the injury.
and uh, the congresswoman has been surprising a number of people so far with her. Everybody who made old dog a menace to society from the movie. But in how you're learning, when Ice Cube and several other rap, uh, uh, rap artists and actors, Tyra Banks, it was a skinhead Caucasian kid who had a high-powered rifle mimicking another Caucasian kid in Texas who got up on the roof with a high-powered rifle mimicking another Caucasian kid who went to an Arkansas school and shot up the school. He was mimicking two other Caucasian kids, Eric and the old boy, the church go gangsters in Columbine, killed up all the school. Now, this cat, this young white boy, this Caucasoid, this Javan, this European, uh, this red-blooded American, this Joe Plummer, this this Sarah Palin, this Tea Party, and absolutely he was congruently perfect to George Bush and the Tea Party because uh, 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 he he was mad because the federal judge that got the bullet first had allowed a civil rights suit to go forth, had allowed some American citizens to claim constitutionality for unenumerated rights. It was the unenumerated rights that allowed him to be a skinhead. And look, guess what he used? The internet. I tell you, these sperm cells, because that's all he is. He's a sperm cell. He was an itch before he was anything. Yes, he was an itch on his daddy's testicles before he was born. <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. I don't mean to laugh, but you know what? In the Greek uh, uh, arts of uh, uh, entertainment, and it's another word for the Greek, the Greek plays. There is a Greek play that is known as the quadrohedron, and it is three comedies and a horror. Why do you need three comedies for one horror? Because what has happened here is so horrific that you must have levity. Levity. You must break it. You must slip, make a mistake. Something to break the ugliness of the horrific condition that this country has fallen into. And listen, I'm really mad. Here in St. Louis, listen, I'm tired of preachers like Eddie Long getting a pass after they take their dicks. Yes, I said it. Their dick. And put it in the mouths of four young men who are looking up to you for mentorship. And you would dare. And then you want to come out on Sunday and hide and get some mercy. You know, I can't stand them niggas like John Wayne Gacy. The line of killer, the radio broadcaster. Now, we got a 28-year-old teacher here in St. Louis City, a white boy. A white boy. A caucasoid. Romulus and Ramus killed his brother. 28-year-old coach at a high school. Been fucking this high school since she was in the 10th grade. Been fucking her all the way up to the 12th grade. This dirty motherfucker been fucking this baby at school. And all of you bishops, like Bishop Giovanni Johnson here in St. Louis, that was fucking a 15-year-old for nine months in a hotel, giving her both top and bottom sodomy. It's just, it's time, it's, it's just sickeningly sad. This school teacher been fucking this baby at school. When I saw the news, the father was standing there with his daughter, who had also been tutored by this 28-year-old. I don't think they should even have a 28-year-old around no teenagers at school. He been fucking her at school, y'all. Now, 
Now, forget the word fucking. He been molesting and raping this baby at school. Didn't nobody fuck me at school. I got fucked at five years old by a man. That's why I can't stand abusers. Nowhere. I love men and I tell men that God can save, but fuck all you abusers. Fuck all y'all. I can't stand you abusers. It's just a shame that this man would be, would be, would be at school, y'all. It's terrible. It's time. You're going to hear a little interruption because I'm at home. And I just, I, I, it's about six in the morning. And my spirit has been yearning all day. Yeah. Been yearning all day uh, because of the sad state that our society has found itself in. And uh, we need to stop. The Bible declared in the book of Second Chronicles 7 and 14, said if my people are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then would I hear from heaven and heal the land. You got to turn. We got to turn. You see, I ain't squalling on this one. I just want to talk to you because abuse must stop. The violations of people's due process. You see, you see, I've been homeless, and and they discriminated against me when I was homeless. Uh, yes, they did, uh, and uh, I was in a shelter here in St. Louis uh, called Salvation Army. Check my name, uh, and see, don't you see that Mark Anthony wouldn't uh, laid up the now for three months uh, while I was just trying uh, to get my disability uh, from 30 years of working uh, with several diseases uh, that wove me down uh, to a wheelchair, uh, to a slow crawl. Uh, I remember when uh, I could hit a fence uh, at one hop uh, and I'd say, uh, Elephants, uh, I'm in the wind, uh, I'm in the wind. Uh, Yeah, they got the board on the floor for you. Maybe next time the 